Welcome to the latest edition of Share Views. It's a gold special, it's a mining stock special, and it's also an Amanda Van Dyke special. Amanda Van Dyke, who is fund manager at SF Peterhouse Gold Fund. How are you today, Amanda? I'm very well, thank you, Zach. Right, uh, we're speaking uh, in the aftermath of uh, something which, uh, from my limited knowledge of these things, uh, should be good for gold. Um, the latest interest rate cut from the Bank of England, the first uh, cut in rates here since 2009. Uh, those were the glory days for gold stocks, weren't they? Those were the glory days for gold stocks. Um, gold is, is a, a commodity, but it's, it's most heavily influenced by, by financial, financial factors in the world. It's heavily influenced by interest rates, inflation, um, and general global growth um, as it pertains to the stock markets and those sorts of things. So any interest rate cuts are generally good for gold. The, 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 what actually hurt um, probably anyone interested in mining stocks and gold uh, in commodities in general was that downturn from 2011 to the beginning of this year, which didn't make any sense really because interest rates were taken to zero. There was QE by 2009, 2010. And really from that time, we should have had the hyperinflation, we should have had the parabolic rise in, in metals and metals prices. Why didn't it happen then? Financial commodity, the money stocks out there are still out there. And we did have unprecedented quantitative easing. But the amount of money printed, in order for the multiplier in money to work and for inflation to get going, you need growth. You need money turning over in the economy. And the velocity of money is also at unprecedented lows and is down again as of today. Um, so while while there has been a great deal of money printing, there hasn't been enough churn in the engine of the global economy to get that money to really cause inflation. That being said, that the impact of the great quanti wall of quantitative easing that's been printed all over the world um, has impacted, and, and markets often respond to anticipated changes. And the market is generally saying that that, that the payment is coming due. The amount of money we've printed is coming due. And, uh, and even though growth is slow, the multiplier, the, the sort of rolling ball effect of, of the amount of money that's been printed is starting to have an effect on inflation. Inflation numbers are going up, and they're expected to go higher. Therefore, gold is the place to go. And in addition to that, because, inflate, because growth, is, growth is low and inflation is rising in pace and anticipated to rise a great deal faster because of all, all of the low rates and that sorts of thing, the markets are generally feeling that the time is now. Well, I'm asking that because what would be rather painful is that after the, the rise in gold stocks we've seen over the last eight, nine months, uh, there was another failure like 2011 and we're all left high and dry. You don't think that's going to happen this time? No. Well, <laughs> Gold is cyclical, um, and it's counter-cyclical to the general stock markets. We've had a great run in stock markets. The, the low rates and quantitative easings have mostly um, been good for financial asset classes, for stocks and bonds. And when stocks and bonds do well, gold does not so well. When, stock, when, when stocks and bonds don't do well, and we think we're going into a period where, where those asset classes are going to correct, then gold does do well. It's very cyclical. It's a three to five year cycle that the stock market goes through and gold goes through counter cyclically. And, and I anticipate that this is the beginning of a three to five year gold bull market. And then it'll come down again. Really gold commodities, you rent them, you don't own them. Right, you're described as a mining guru, but I think that's actually doesn't um, fully do you justice in the sense that you are a fund manager, uh, you, you are dealing with real money and real stocks. Uh, your, your, your fund is up over 100% uh, so far, you know, year to date. Um, do, do you think that's the, the we, have we had the, the, the sweet, you know, like the low hanging fruit of the rally, or do you think there's equal, equal gains to come? Um, I think there's equal gains to come. I think the fastest gains were acquired in the first half of this year. Gold is up 28% year to date, and if you're in a gold fund that's invested in mining stocks, you need leverage to that. So, so I would be expected to outperform that. I still think gold started this year at 1050. Um, it's at, when I left the office today, it was 1063 or 1363. Um, I honestly believe the year-end gold price will be 
between 14 and 1500, um, that's what I'm targeting. Therefore, there's definitely room left in, in this year's rally and probably another two to, two to four years left in the overall rally. So there's a great deal of room left um, to make money in gold right now. Okay, well, let's just look at a couple of slides uh, for the first part of the show. Um, not too much on the mining sector here. Lloyds Bank, as you probably expect, with the interest rate uh, decision coming through, the, one of the most traded stocks there. LGO Energy, um, private investor favorite uh, as far as uh, the, um, the oil area is concerned. Um, crude oil b b was nudging the $40 a barrel area. Does it have any relationship to gold at the moment? There is a gold oil ratio, um, but gold... <laughs> Gold is a financial commodity, whereas oil is very much a consumed commodity. And, and the real issue with oil in the world is in the first part of the year, there were some impending um, supply, supply constraints, which nudged it oil up above, slightly above $50. Um, it's back down to $40, and there's no real, we are pretty much in supply demand balance, and there's nothing really that looks like it's going to change that. Obviously, circumstances can change, but I think that the the world, the markets are, are thinking that this is where oil might be for the next little while. And so the, the rally in, in oil and gas seems to be over. That being said, because there's always another side of the coin, with impending inflation, um, people are going towards real asset classes. And oil is a real asset class. So it's, it's seen to be probably a safer bet than a financial stock. Right. Um, just in your area slightly, Premier African Minerals uh, are doing well at the moment. And then Rolls-Royce, uh, talk of the town, given that they haven't had a, their sixth or seventh profits warning. I think there was no profits warning this time, so uh, the market's celebrating there. Uh, interesting slide just to finish the first half of the show um, on the gold outlook. Uh, this looks like uh, rocket science to me. Maybe you can explain what it means. Well, people are always asking when, like how much is left in the gold rally. Um, this stock, this this shows a trend, and this is the seasonal, for the last 25 years, how gold has performed in bear markets, bull markets, and how it's performed on a monthly basis. And gold is very, very seasonal. And you'll see that a great time to buy gold, regardless of a bull market or a bear market, is always in March, because the gold price goes down. It tends to rally a bit in May. It, it hurts a little in the summer around now is a great time to buy. And it always rallies in September and October and goes up. So if you believe that this, this price trend is going to continue, you can expect a reasonable rally in September and October for gold prices. And knowing the seasonality of gold is very helpful of, of timing your purchases. Well, we can look forward to that. And we can also look forward to, uh, in the second part of the show, Amanda's favorite gold stocks. But, um, stay tuned for that. Welcome back to Share Views. We're here with Amanda Van Dyke, who's a fund manager at SF Peter House Gold Fund. Right, Amanda, you've got, uh, we're going to go through a special treat for everyone. We're going to go through your favorite gold stocks, or at least the, the stocks which are in your fund. Uh, starting off, I hope, with uh, Shanta. Yes, Shanta. Um, Shanta is a great little stock. It's a gold producer um, in Tanzania. They've produced very consistently um, and ramped up, and they have a new underground, high-grade underground mine that is going into production shortly. I'm hoping that they can edge up a, to the 100,000 ounce mark, but that is not for certain. They have not announced that. But I, I'm, they've done a lot of regional exploration, and I'm hoping that they can develop some of their, their regional plays. But they're a very consistent and reliable producer of gold that's listed um, on, on the UK market. And, and I think that uh, they will continue to do well with the gold price and consistently, hopefully, outperform the gold price as they have for the majority of this year. And, and I'm, I'm very certain that management will continue the secure job they've been doing operationally and, and within the market. Any difference between the East African um, gold miners and the West African, or is it, it was just nothing, to, nothing to talk about there? Every, every mining company really needs to be taken on its own merits. You, people who try to say, you know, gold stocks are going to all do well, they won't all do well, especially the small caps. You really have to analyze each mining company on its own merits by the quality of management, the jurisdictional risk, the, the quality of the asset itself, 
Um, and that has to be balanced in consideration of where you put your money. And, and there are some great, great Eastern minds like this, and there are some great um, West African minds. Great North African sentiment, I believe, is coming up short, yeah. shortly. And, and it, it really is dependent on the three factors I stated earlier. Ge geopolitical differences, uh, there, are, there are a little bit of that. Purely on geopolitical, there's always exceptions. Highland Gold is doing brilliant. Other Russian gold miners are not doing well. Highland Gold has done brilliantly this year um, because they're accept there are outperformance. The, sect the region isn't really what's important. I mean, there's a few places that are quite difficult, obviously. Indonesia is not my favorite jurisdiction. Uh, but generally speaking, um, it's up down. It's down to the down to the management teams to choose to perform or not or not perform. Okay, let's move along to the next contender, sentiment as you were, you mentioned. Um, one great. I mean, it took a long time to get started this one actually this year, didn't it? It was hanging around 60, 70 people. It seemed like months, and then all of a sudden. Well, it's done very well um, for a number of reasons. Now, most of the good producing gold stocks have broken out. Um, they really are up somewhere between 50 and 100% this year, a lot of them. And some of, there's been some stellar outperformance because the, the entire gold mining market was completely oversold in the last bear market, which basically ended at the end of last year. Um, but sentiment, in addition to, to, to going with the rest of the market, has, has significantly outperformed because they've increased their tonnage and their output, they've increased their efficiencies, they've acquired some new assets at very good prices in other parts of Africa. Uh, the long-term growth, the consistent day-to-day -day production on sentiments excellent, and I truly believe that over the next, shall we say, five-year period, they will consistently increase the amount they produce um, and become a, have, be a great growth story as well as a great uh, existing mining company. Okay, let's go to the next stock, which is Hummingbird. Uh, decent breakout just quite recently, actually. Well, something changed. Something rather significant changed. Um, they funded their. They've been a, a gold explorer and developer for the last five years. Um, they fully funded all through equity, interestingly, on the UK market, uh, their primary mine right now in Mali. Um, and that should be going into production next year. Uh, it's a great little mine producing 100,000, that will be producing 100,000 ounces a year. And given that there is no debt in it, all of that, um, all of those profits, all of those, that performance should be borne by shareholders. I, I truly believe that it's done well this year. Um, I can see this share doubling in the next year. As they get closer to production and they successfully get to production, I would be very happy to see this share price double. Okay, well, good news there, we hope. Uh, Norikum, uh, rather more of a struggle here. But private investors love it. I mean, they're still, still going for it. Um, Norikum's got a lot to prove. Uh, they have a, they bought an asset in Georgia, which is not the most well-known mining region in the world, um, but they have, they are going in, but they are a production story. I anticipate and hope they, they come into production in August at the latest in, in um, September, but with the announcement of the first pour of gold, and they are commissioning their gold production right now, um, I, I would like to see a very significant re-rating here. They also have an absolutely huge package of land. Um, it's Soviet resource, so it's not a Western resource that's recognized, but the Soviet resource is exceptional. And if they can, over the next few years, convert, take the profits they make out of their mine and convert, and convert the Soviet resource into a Western resource, this could be a very, very significant company in the future. Okay, so we're worth being patient there. A, start, a chart which looks like it's heading for the, the, the skies here, um, uh, Caledonia. Caledonia is one of those sleepy stories that proves that hard work really works. Um, Zimbabwe is a very difficult jurisdiction to work in. Um, and, and not only is it a very difficult jurisdiction to work in that many have failed on, um, it's very hard to get market confidence in Zimbabwe, but these guys have done it. They've successfully refurbished an underground mine. They've successfully paid dividends. Um, they've increased their, their tonnage and their output. And with their positive cash flows, 
um, I'm very hopeful that they will acquire some other mines and, and turn around some, some not so not so successful Zimbabwean operations. It goes to show you that, as I said, it's not just jurisdiction in Africa. It's about the team that makes those mines work. And, and these, Caledonia has proven that it is possible in Zimbabwe. Well, if you can deal with Robert Mugabe, you can deal with anybody as far as I'm concerned. But uh, <laughs> Pan-African, next. Pan-African is a South African producer, also a dividend payer, which is one of the reasons that it's, it's been very popular of late. They are a consistent producer. They tend to make their guidance or slightly outperform their guidance. And they've just acquired another asset at a very low price. So I would hope that their um, production will go up in the next year or two. Um, a consistent, good margins, good management in another arguably difficult jurisdiction, South Africa. Right, OK. So uh, final slide, I think. Ooh, Keras. Um, I've actually invested a little more in Keras recently. Uh, Keras is, is not a typical mining story. Um, they are tribute miners, which means they, uh, they take old end-of-life mining, mining projects and they mine them, to the, they mine the remnants of what's there and process them, and then just pay, pay you know, a small royalty or fee to the, to the original owner of the land. But the, it means that they have very low upfront capital costs. Unfortunately, they, they made the mistake of, well, they promised a certain amount of delivery, and that incredible fall you've seen is them not, not making their guidance. Um, they, they, they produced about half of what they said they would produce because they miscalculated their grades, and they made a mistake. There's Didn't the market also get a bit too, too excited about them as well? They did get very excited about them. Um, the market tends to do that. <laughs> um, I would have, I you have to invest before news. Um, they disappointed. I would like to think um, that I know the management and I, and I have faith that they are very hardworking and honest people. And I think that we will be pleasantly surprised when they do meet their guidance um, in the next quarter. Okay, well, that uh, expectation, we th I thank uh, Amanda Van Dyke, fund manager at SF. Peter House Gold Fund, thank you very much for going through the world of gold today.